everyone, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do just a bright, cheerful floral pattern on this glass wine bottle. I am going to be using a number 12 flat brush. And let's see what we've got here. A number 10 flat brush. A number 8 flat brush. A number 4 deerfoot stippler and then a dotting stylist. Colors I'm using, fresh foliage, thicket, magenta, moon yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, autumn leaves, and then warm white. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. I have already cleaned off the bottle. That's very important when you're doing glass paint. Wash it with soap and water, clean it off with denatured alcohol, and or just rubbing alcohol, whatever you have, and then you're ready to go. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be double loading my brush into the yellow ochre. You know, and I said warm white. I I just thought of that. It's actually wicker white. Take out the warm white. I did not use that. Sorry about that. I've been using warm white the last couple and I just got thinking that wasn't right what I said. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start first of all with this type of uh, flower. And basically I'm just touching I'm on the, the tip of the brush and touching, pulling it in to the center. Just pulling it in. Now you can vary the size of your petals if you want. It's up to you. Yes, some can be pushed down more than others, be thinner, thicker. Then when I go to do the next layer, because it's a layered flower, I'm going to turn my brush so that my the white will actually be appearing more prominent than the, the yellow ochre. And I just keep layering it. Layering it, layering it. And just continue pulling it to the center. Alright, so then I'm going to Turn it again, pull it, and then pull it, pull it, pull it. And the more opaque your design is, the more durable it will be. It's basically the thicker you place your paint on, that will, will allow it to be more durable. Now when you're painting on glass, it is a little different beast than painting on paper um, because it can actually you know, pull the paint up underneath if you're layering. So just be careful. You, know, you might have to do some adjustments to your painting or the pressure that you put on. But you'll learn as you go you know, how to do it. Alright, so there's one. Then I'm going to continue on with this color to put in my other blooms that are going to be this color. And I'm just going down to the bottom and pulling it in once again. And if you want to start with the you know, lighter color on the bottom being prominent, that's fine. I'm just pretty much keeping it, for the most part, one in the same, using the same layering as I did on the previous one. Same order. Just a fun little flower. Not really supposed to be anything in particular. It's just more just a fun thing I came up with. I'm sure there's probably something out there that's similar but it's not really my intention here. Again, just an easy design. 
That's what I focus on for beginners. Don't be afraid to paint. Do not be afraid to paint. Get your paint brushes out and go to it. You don't have to have, if you're painting on glass, yeah, I do recommend that you have the uh, paint for glass. However, if you're just practicing, say you're practicing on the wax paper that I recommend, yeah, you can use whatever paint you want. Yeah, except when you do the actual glass painting, though, you do want to have glass paint or you want to have an additive in your paint you know, to make it for glass. If not, it could just wash off very easily. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to stick another one of these blooms very close. And I am actually doing, if I can fit it, three of each of these which I'm going to do another set in the autumn leaves. And typically I don't do, I try to do odd numbers. If I were to be painting this bottle to sell, which I'm not, this is one of my bottles I reuse for videos, I would be painting the design all the way around the bottle and not just in the front. For the purpose of the video though, I'm just doing it in the front part of the of it of the bottle, I should say. I guess that, and then you can just you know tip it, put your brush on the tip if you want to pull in some of the brown in the center. You can do that. The next one I'm going to do is going to be the autumn leaves with the wicker white. I'm just loading my brush in here. I could just go beside it and do this kind of, or you can tip it in and do your blending strokes. All right, so let's get started on this one. I'm going to go up here and put one in. It's on the curve so my brush is kind of sliding a little bit but that's okay. And it's a little bit bigger brush. I think this is the 12. I think I said I did the 10 before. Alright, I'm going to fill this back in a little bit and then I am going to come in here with my white Push down and pull, push and pull. And you can see it's just a very, very easy, 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 easy design. And that's intentional. Just so you know, it's not, not an accident. But I want it to be, as I mentioned, just something for people to paint, to be creative. So it's such a great, great stress reliever. It truly, truly is. Like this. Pull in. Pull in. And then I'm going to go around the center with some more of the autumn leaves. Just do a little bit like that. I will be tapping in a center, just so you know. You can put lower ones around it if you want. But I think it's good just like that. Alright, let's keep going here. I am going to put another one right here. Just pull them in. If you get too much paint on your brush, just scrape it off. I don't recommend washing your brushes in between unless you absolutely have to just for the mere fact that with the glass paint water can weaken it so if your brush is damp you could get water mixed in with your paint and then that might not have the same durability as if if you had not done that also something to mention is 
if you feel like painting wet on wet is not working for you, then each layer that you do, hit it with a hairdryer. And that way you'll have maybe more of the feeling that you'd like to have and the design that you want to have will be a little crisper if you you know feel that need just a suggestion you don't have to I am not doing that right now I just stepped that in the wrong paint um, I am painting wet on wet which I'm fine with because sometimes the designs are actually nicer if you do some drying time in between but not always that's strictly up to you Alright, so I'm going to do one more of these in this color, and I'm going to just do it right over here, kind of try to follow my, my paper sample that I painted. You'll see the paper, the paper sample in my uh, picture, my thumbnail pictures, I include that, and that's basically to give me inspiration on what the paint on the bottle or the glass, whatever I'm demonstrating I don't always stay strictly with it because sometimes my space the difference in the space on the paper as opposed to the bottle or the glass piece that I'm painting on is different but I do try to stick with the actual you know, flower design or technique that I was using as much as possible. And I got a little orange in here. Just little strokes, just do like on the side. Just a little smidge, drawing it in there. Okay, right. so the next one I cleaned out my number 10 brush. And I'm going to be using the white and the magenta for this. And I think for the most part these are five petal flowers. And I'm just going to do little, it's real easy little, I don't want to say like U-shape, I guess is what it would be, more like U-shape petals. And just swing them around. And complete the complete the flower. If you feel like that needs to connect better, you can either leave it or come back over and and do that. And you can make them smaller too if you don't want them to be this big. And I'm going to try to do this one in threes in this spot. I do still need to add some leaves. I haven't done my leaves yet. If you view my videos, you know I'm a leaf person. Gotta love my leaves. And I think I'm going to start this one going up the bottle a little bit. And it is going to come over the flowers below it. We're going to layer, just like that nice and easy and then I'm going to throw one in here and I might pick up some paint from one of the other flowers that I'm layering over and that's fine once again if you don't like that kind of a look then by all means feel free to Trying to get this to layer over this better. By all means, feel free to hit it with a hairdryer heat gun. Just keeping it easy. This one might pick up some color too because it is still wet. Any of these that I'm painting close to or by could potentially be wet enough for me to carry some of that color into my design which it's fine I'm 
going to pop out here a little bit. You don't have to show all five petals. I mean, I could have just stopped with two right there. But it's fine this way, too. And then I am going to come over here and throw a couple of this type of flower into the side here. This is just kind of, to me, reminds me of spring, this design. Just something light. Light and easy. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to come down here, swoop around it. And make an easy stem. All right, so with the with my little daughter, I am going to do the centers of these, and they're just going to be really simple. I'm sorry for the noise of clanking on the glass. I know that can drive people crazy, so I apologize. And I decided instead of just doing a solid dot, to just adding some little dots in the center was a little bit more fun for this design and that's why I went that direction okay I'm just gonna keep going here no, no certain amount you know, you don't have to put them on in any certain manner. Just put them on. Put them on. However it works, do it. Now for the other centers, I'm going to use the Deerfoot Stippler. And I'm loading it with the Burnt Sienna and the Burnt Umber. And I'm just going to tap into the center. Just tap it around until I get the look I want. If I need to keep working on these, I can. You know, until I get it, get the look I want. Centers are going to be the same for both colors of this style of flower. I love these brushes. If you've never tried them for centers, definitely recommend them. Because I like the scruffy brushes too. But I don't know why I like these so much. I tend to gravitate towards this, this style. Or I'm finding myself doing that. Yeah, I'm finding some of these are still pretty wet. And so, you know, to give it a, a nicer, neater look, you might want to hit them. The hair dryer or give it some dry time. I never repeat myself a lot. I just want to make sure you understand that however you want these to turn out, whatever you need to get the look you want, then go for it. Do not be afraid because if you mess up or you feel like you've messed up and you don't know how to fix it, guess what? All you have to do is wash it off and start again. Pretty easy. Pretty easy and inexpensive really. Alright, so let's get moving on get this done. I am double loading my brush into the thicket. Fresh foliage tipping one side into the moon yellow which I absolutely love. And then we're going to start. So basically, I'm going to just pretend that I'm putting a stem that's going to go down this, down this bottle. 
I want to connect my flowers to it. And I'm just going to have one, one stem that ends up coming out of this bottom. Now if you don't want to do a stem and you just want to put, put uh, leaves around your flowers, that's perfectly fine. I'm pretending to have a stem. Now of course on this dark glass bottle, it's not as easy to see as it would be if it wasn't dark, but we are going to just manage to do it just the same. That's a little bit too pinkish for me. I'm going to add some more green in here and try to try to get that worked out a little bit. So you just got to learn how to fix things or make it look more like what you intended. If that makes sense. I know that sometimes having an additional uh, color in it actually can enhance it. Oh, I'm just going to swing that over here and it's fine. Alright, so I did my little stem and like I said, you can work on it. You can make it to where it's more prevalent. I think for the purpose of the video though, you know, you, you get the gist, I would imagine, I hope. It's all good. Alright. So then I'm going to do these just simple little leaves on it. And basically, like down here I'm going to do it, I am just doing like a wiggle leaf. And then I'm going to come back up and just swirl my, my brush up. And if you feel like it's took too much paint off, then just fill it in. And then I'm going to just try to put a little stem. It's kind of too much of a stem, but anyways. And then I'm going to come over here and basically do the same thing. And I'm just going to turn the brush and come back up. And put a little stem in it. Now you can do the opposite direction if you want to have the lighter green on the outside because this is a darker bottle. It's a very dark bottle. You can do that. You can rotate them in if you want to switch them out. I'm not putting any other leaves on it besides what I'm seeing or showing you right now. Let me try that. I think I'd do it, do it better one, one the other direction. You don't necessarily have to pick your brush up, but I'm tending to do that right now for whatever reason. Okay. And then you can just keep going. If you want to like throw one in here where you feel like, okay, it's just a, you know, filling in some space here. That's fine. And I'm going to flip it around. Like I said, it's much easier to do on paper. I'm going to get them to look a lot nicer on paper, but it's primarily because when you turn the brush, you can pull up the paint. i go over it one more time here. I didn't like that stem too well. I don't want to do it too much though because then I end up pulling pulling the paint off from underneath. Okay, it's the light stem. And then we can come out here. Maybe I'll rotate and do a lighter green out here. Out this direction. And then just you just basically just slightly pulling it back. I mean, you can do two. I'm going to put one up here. Sorry, I tend to get so into this, I'm not paying attention to what I'm actually on screen, so I apologize. See, I want to, I think that's moving a little bit too much. So I may have to pat it in, separating a little bit up here, which can happen. And you just got to come back, just be careful. go in there like that. That's what I say, when you work something too much then it can come back and pull up the paint below and then it that affects the durability of the design. So we don't want that either. Go ahead and do this one again. See that pulls the paint up. But if it does that for you, just come back over it and 
just put it in. Pretty easy. You can put your little stem in. I'm not going to do too many of these because I think you probably get the gist of it. But I think it's pretty. Very, very, um, I just stuck my finger in it, of course. I do that. I'm so good at that. Good heavens, Amy. Oh, no, I'm doing it backwards. See? I bloop all the time. And that's going to pull the paint off. It was nice until I messed it up. Then stuck my finger in it. Don't you watch me? No, that's not a, not a new thing. I'm just going to do it that direction here real quick. Fix it up as much as the best I can. And try not to stick my finger in it again. Alright, here we go. Sorry about that. Alright, if you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, hit that uh, subscribe button and notification bell. And then when you are done watching the video, if you would hit the share button that's underneath, share this video on your social network with all your family and friends, I would appreciate it. Alright, any questions, comments, please leave those down below. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to watch my videos. And until the next time, you have a good one. <music>